And Chase, talking about young guys, Ethan Utley, a defensive lineman mm-hmm. out of Nashville, he's their latest commit of seven in 2025. Your thoughts just about how recruiting's going, big targets out there. Uh, are people satisfied with the Josh Heupel recruiting effort at this point? I think people are mostly pleasantly surprised. I think if you were somebody who thought Tennessee would, um, if you're someone who wants Tennessee to be, if you're a Tennessee fan, you want to see them at the top five every year. I just, you're not going to be happy. Like that's, it's just hard. Like you look at who's ahead of them. And I I always ask this question of people who get frustrated with where Tennessee's at. If they're, they're somewhere in that 10 to 13 range, more years than not, that still puts you in the blue chip ratio of teams that can win a national title. You want to be somewhere in that top 15 is what I've always said. It's like, if you're in there, you're going to have one of the 10 to 15 best rosters in the sport. And that's a good spot to be in, especially with the expanded playoff. Like that is a healthy spot. That's a healthy program. Um, You're not going to get everybody. Tennessee fans are always going to be wishing for more. They're always going to be, but it's like you just brought in that the class that you're talking about with Ethan Utley. He's a big get um, best player on the defensive side of the ball in the state of Tennessee. You get the best offensive player in George McIntyre in this class, five-star quarterback. He's also with this group. Let's see what he's able to do. Um, as a peer recruiter in the 2025 uh, class, you have Rodarius Jackson um, over there, Memphis, four-star receiver. You have uh, Dodson in the boat, another four-star receiver. I think Tennessee, they're they're in on a lot of other big names, the receiver spot. But I think you got to be happy. I think Tennessee has developed really well. They're right there in that blue chip ratio. They'll be, I think right now, I looked at on three this week. They're somewhere in that 12 to 13 range in terms of blue chip uh players going into 2024 that's good like i think for hypo and the questions coming in of that kind of jump from ucf to tennessee he's done a really good job and i think the staff has done a really good job and chase you mentioned the 12 or soon to be 14 team playoff and what that does to a fan base like tennessee and we talked a little fan psyche before we started to record and on one hand i got to think that when it was just a 14 playoff Sure, there were a lot of frustrated fan bases out there thinking, okay, we've got the same six or seven teams competing for playoff spots every year and making the playoffs. But now that it's and that, in a sense, for some fans being a bit of an excuse to say, hey, we go nine and three, 10 and two, and then every so often we can get ourselves in a playoff position. That would be phenomenal. I'm good. I understand there's only four spots that's really tough to do. But now that it goes to 12 to 14, is there almost more pressure that you need to make a 12 or 14 team playoff? If you can't make the top 12 or 14 in the country, you you need to be doing that at a place like Tennessee. Well, I think the next two years is going to be huge. Obviously all eyeballs are going to be on Nico Yamaliava, right? Like I just, I think if Tennessee does not make a playoff appearance with Nico in these next two years, I think that's a problem for the fan base. I think the fan base will be pretty, um pretty disappointed i think um you'll lose a lot of electricity um if that's the case because that probably means a lot went wrong in the nico era if you don't make the cfp one of these next two years because i think what we've seen is just elite quarterback play is just such an elevator in this sport and when you have a heisman-esque quarterback and you have a roster that's going to be in that top 15 in the country that should account to a lot of wins i mean tennessee one of the things I pit, I actually going into 2023, I predicted that Tennessee would go 10 and two and that got a lot of pushback. And I like, I literally called this out Carolina game and uh, splitting Alabama and Georgia. But part of that was, is because a, I love Hendon hooker and what I believed in what this offense could be with him. But it was also Tennessee was the only power five team in 2020, uh, 2021 to not win 10 games at, that had a top 10 scoring offense. That was it. Everyone else was a 10 went plus one team. This offense is the name of the game in this sport. If you have an elite offense, you have a chance to win double digit games every single year because it's just that's just the way the rules are. That's the way the sport has gone. Tennessee is in a position now with Nico and with the like I talked about with the wide receiver depth with the offensive line. This this year is just you bring in five star transfer a tackle Lance Hurd to be the left tackle. You have John Campbell, who's great at left tackle last year. He slides over to the right. You have Cooper Mays back for another year. You have Javante Spragans back for another year at right guard. Left guard, we'll see how it plays out. But ultimately, you're really deep. You're an older team. You have maybe the best edge rusher in all of the sport this year. If Tennessee is not a playoff team, I think some stuff went really wrong. And it's uh, you hope that's not the case as a fan. But I just think there's so many reasons for optimism right now that Tennessee will end up making the CFP um, the next two years because it's just I think Nico is going to be really good. I think this team is really, really deep on both sides of the ball. 
And I, I, th- I like their schedule. Like this schedule to me looks like a 10 and 2, 11 and 1 type season. You get Florida and Bama at home this year. That's good. I actually prefer the Georgia game on the road because that way you get one of those more coin flip games at home at Tennessee because it's not really a coin flip uh, as we've seen. Like Georgia's just a different kind of beast altogether that you kind of would rather uh, that be a road game. So if you you get a big upset win, great. We got it on the road and we also got this big home games because I think being at home was huge against South Carolina last year. It was huge against a and last year, getting both those games at home. Josh Heupel has only lost one home game in the last two years, and that was to the best program in the in the sport in Georgia last year. So Heupel has done an extremely uh, good job of winning his home games. The place is electric. There's just so much pressure in his kind of offense in Neyland when you have a stadium and a coliseum that's built like Tennessee. It's hard when you get in a hole against this offense and the crowd's really rocking. It's just hard not to let things unravel. We've seen Kentucky unravel. We've seen South Carolina unravel. We saw NM unravel. It's just it's hard uh, when things go awry against this uh, iteration of uh, Tennessee football. So for me, I look at the schedule it's just prime for a 10 and two plus run. And I think if you're in the sec and you win 10 plus games, you're going to find yourself in the college football playoff, especially uh, with this expansion. Chase Thomas laying down the knowledge for us. The Vols uh, get it uh, on the orange and the white uh, only chance to see Tennessee football, of course, this spring in the spring game. And then we head toward August camp. Uh, Chase Thomas podcast is a place to be lock in on Chase's work right there. Chase appreciate you being here. And getting us all caught up on uh, Tennessee football. Absolutely. Thank you. Go balls.